Guess who's 40, bitches? This nerd. Welcome to Pillow Talk Derm. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a board certified dermatologist. I turned 40 yesterday and I have now entered my midlife crisis. So welcome to my YouTube channel where we are going to be covering today specifically skincare must-haves in your 40s, but in general, every Saturday at 10 a.m., we meet up and talk about the beauty industry, the bullshit, the marketing, the hype, skincare, your skin, problems, medical conditions, cosmetic procedures, so that you are never taken for a ride because an empowered nerd is an educated nerd, and an educated nerd starts here. So without further ado, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and let us enter this decade youthfully. I've struggled a lot with the term anti-aging for several years because it just felt like if you're not aging, you're dead and why are we all fighting it? And I really had an epiphany at 2 a.m. last night after my Madonna concert that I went to. And it's not about anti-aging, it's about aging youthfully. And not just aging youthfully physically, but also mentally. Watching that 65 year old woman, who is I believe two years younger than my mom, shaking carelessly on stage her booty, and singing at the top of her lungs. Yes, she was actually singing. And having fun and being carefree about it was truly inspirational. And aging starts in your head and aging is then reflected onto your face and your body. So it's not just important to age youthfully physically, it is important to age youthfully mentally. And that is something that I think I've gained some wisdom <laughs> overnight by watching her concert, but I was truly very much moved by her and I just wanted to just pass that along. So let's focus on 40s and what are the biggest changes that happen in your 40s? I always say that age is not a skin type. It's true. Your age is not a skin type. You can have different problems in different decades and you really do have to tailor your skincare routine on your problems. But like everything, there are trends that happen to everyone as we get older. And in our 40s, certain things are inevitable. We start to lose more collagen and elasticity, especially as we enter our perimenopausal years. The average age of menopause is in your mid to late 40s. And with that, we have hormonal fluctuations and estrogen decline that can affect the skin thickness as well. In addition, our cell turnover starts to decrease. So we're not as radiant as we once were and we want to incorporate ingredients that allow our cells to turn over regularly and frequently. Sun damage has been lingering underneath the surface of the skin and it starts to creep up and become more obvious and that is why I am so militant and adamant about an even skin tone because believe it or not that is one of the first things you start to notice even in your 30s even if you've had freckles they start to get messy in your mid 30s messy because they start to combine and converge and coalesce. And so you want to have an even skin tone. Your own levels of antioxidants start to decline in our body and our antioxidants are what allow us to fight the free radical damage from the day and stress and life. And it is important to realize that we are not in control of everything. And so we have to help ourselves as much as we best can in order to age the way we want to age. Now, I just wanna hit quickly on menopause, and this is not a menopause video because we're not fully there yet. <laughs> but before you guys go crazy on hormones, etc., be very careful where you're buying it or purchasing it. Do not buy an estrogen cream off of Amazon. You wanna make sure you're doing it very, very much in a regulated manner. Additionally, it's important to understand your own personal medical history and family history, especially if you have any sort of predisposition to breast cancer or hormonally linked cancers, etc. So make sure you're not only speaking to your dermatologist, but also your OBs and maybe even having an endocrinologist along the ride is not a bad idea to help you evaluate your levels. Without further ado, we are jumping in to skincare and I'm going to break this down by category and why it's important to have. And this is actually a also bittersweet moment for me because it is the first YouTube video where we introduce our new brand name. So I'm going to have one of my products in every single category because obviously I've worked hard for this brand, but we are officially now Dr. Idris. I sound and feel like an egomaniac referring to my own brand with my own name on the package. But if you followed me on Thursday, you'll know why that happened. So if you haven't, click below. I'll link the video to the live I did on Thursday below. But starting with the major fade flash mask, Different name, same great formula. This is an exfoliating mask, which is a beautiful gel 
based mask that you can leave on your face. You can even leave it overnight if you're not very sensitive. We do not write that on the box or on the website because I don't want to deal with unnecessary phone calls. However, it is a 15% glycolic acid mask with lactic acid and tranexamic acid to help even out your skin tone and to make your skin feel baby smooth soft. I use it three times a week. It has been a game changer. My mother who is 67 has applied it to her sunspots on the back of her hands uh, and left them on throughout the day and actually reapplied them throughout the day after washing her hands, believe it or not. And those sunspots to my shock and surprise are gone. Formulated gently enough so most skin types can tolerate it. That being said, we also have Skin Better Science. Now, this is a brand that we carry in office. These are Alpha Rep pads. Yeah, they're not the most eco-friendly. Each one's individually wrapped. I do sometimes take this when I'm on the road and I have to just pack one or two things in my bag. These are a combination of retinol and AHAs and BHAs. So you have retinoids, um, AHAs like lactic acid, glycolic acid, and cell acid all in this pad. So I wouldn't recommend this if you are not somebody who is used to using a retinol at all and instead if you are a retinol veteran. Exfoliating products that I think are important to incorporate because you do want to work on the surface and texture of your skin. Number two, we're going to go into serums, but serums like toners means nothing, and so it's important for you guys to understand what serum you're using and why. Starting with antioxidants, then peptides, and then brightening. Antioxidants, we have Jordan Samuel. This is an antioxidant powerhouse. It is his treatment emulsion, which retails for 65 bucks. It is beautifully pink because it has astaxanthin in it, which is the same pigment that gives a salmon pink hue to salmon. There is no scent to it whatsoever. It also has niacinamide, resveratrol, as well as palmitoyl tripeptide 8, and it is nicely hydrating. So it is a nice serum to have, especially if you're starting to lose moisture in your skin and you feel like every step of your routine has to have some element of hydration because you want to gain that back into your skin. So it is lightly hydrating and it is a very nice antioxidant serum. Another one that I was turned on to last year, which I truly finished and loved, was the Allies of Skin Multi-Peptide and Growth Factor Advanced Lifting Serum. It is pricey for 188 bucks and it has a combination of 3% growth factor complex, which is proprietary, I cannot speak to that, but it also has a 9% lifting complex made up of several peptides like oligopeptide 1, pentapeptide 18, and pentapeptide 48. So all of these complexes of between the peptides and the growth factors help to improve the appearance of the skin. I will say when you use it, and this one is empty, this is the one I finished, your skin has this tighter, more sheen-like appearance, and it's extremely lightweight. If you're looking for hydration, this is not it. If you're looking for a kind of a tightening effect underneath your products, this is a nice one to use. So that one is Allies of Skin. And of course we have Dr. Idris. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh each time I say my own brand, not because I'm full of myself, but because it's just weird talking about yourself in the third person. My Hyper Serum, again, Different name, same great formula, nothing changed in terms of formulation or ownership of the brand. We just changed the brand name. This is a brightening serum that is hydrating. It has kojic acid, arbutin, licorice root, and when you buy it, you get a second cartridge as well in order to ensure freshness so that they do not get exposed to light or air. This retails for $68 and it is great for evening out your skin tone and it gives your skin an extra sheen. I have it on my face this morning. So those are serums that are wonderful in terms of peptides, antioxidants, and brightening. Now, if you are somebody who needs an additional boost when it comes to whether it is hormonal breakouts or discoloration or both, azelaic acid is a nice one to add in during this step. I will preface it by saying that it stinks. This is by Paula's Choice. It's their 10% azelaic acid. Azelaic acid at 10% over the counter is ideal. Otherwise, get yourself a 15% prescription it will pill and so azelaic acid is one of those ingredients that i use at night and not necessarily in the morning because it's just not cosmetically elegant i have yet to find an azelaic acid a pure one that doesn't pill and so this is one that you incorporate at night if you have breakouts or pigmentation issues now in our 40s and this is something i started to notice actually in my late 30s which was before yesterday. <laughs> but in our 40s, it becomes more obvious that our eyes become extremely reactive to hormonal changes, to your period, to lack of sleep, to alcohol. Alcohol is the death of us. And yes, sugar is not our best friend, but I still believe everything in moderation for a happy, 
I was going to say happy wife, happy life, but I'm my own wife. So happy gut, happy stomach, happy head, happy life. Because without sugar, life is not fun. But so if you are somebody who's very reactive to all of the above, your eyes probably wake up like two puffer fishes or puffer fish. And by the way, did you guys know it's not luggages? That you say just the luggage, plural? I learned that last week. Clearly, I did take English as a foreign language in undergrad. But... Dr. Idris has the deep puffer, which is my staple every morning. I keep this baby next to my bed. And quite frankly, before I even open my eyes, I roll around my eyes and massage the gel in. And then I go to the bathroom. Then I use the toilet. Then I brush my teeth. Then I jump in the shower. And by the time I come out, it's like... I'm open and I am somebody who have really cut out alcohol. I drink maybe once a month, not that I ever drank that much. I would probably have one or two drinks a week prior to that, but I'm now limiting it to once a month. I'm trying to just be overall healthier and better. But when I do drink alcohol, it really does affect my eyes the next day. If I cry the next day, my eyes are just like out of control. And ever since I had LASIK, especially, I do feel the dryness makes my eyes more reactive in terms of puffiness. This has been a godsend. In the winter, I even use it on my nose, and sometimes I even use it down here to help deep puff if I had a very salty meal the night before. So this is great, but the eyes are really truly the gateway to your soul, and in your 40s, your soul is puffy. So deep puff with the deep puffer. If you have fine lines, which you probably will start having in your 40s because our collagen starts to decline much faster, especially as we become perimenopausal, where apparently we lose up to 30% within five years. So we go from losing 1% a year in our late 20s to almost 30 percent over five years so by the time you hit 50 your collagen is like 40 percent depleted great news <laughs> it's so excited it's a privilege to age truly it's a privilege retinol is something you want to incorporate around your eyes now could you use a regular retinol around your eyes yes but chances are it might be too strong this is one by la roche posay they do not tell you the percent of the pure retinol but it's glycerin based and it is specifically formulated for the eyes so when in doubt buy yourself a retinol eye cream and then the inky list also has one for 10 bucks they have a supposedly stabilized slow release retinoid formula that avoids irritation I haven't tried it, but I've seen it and I actually have it in my house in Connecticut. I've just never tried theirs, but full disclosure, just so that you guys don't think that I have tried it. I just wanted to make sure that we incorporate more price ranges in these videos. But moving on to retinol specifically, A313 is a cult favorite in France. Now, a lot of bloggers are like, I don't understand the value in this because it's so light. Yes, it is light. It's a combination of some of the lightest retinoids on the market, which are the retinol esters, retinol acetate, palmitate, and propionate. But what's amazing about this is that it has some sort of like magic voodoo shit in it where your face has an instant effect the next morning and you look somewhat smoother, but you will be, you'll get itchy. I still get itchy. I can't fully tolerate it all the time. I'm not going to lie, but it does give a nice instant gratification the next day if you can tolerate it. And even though it is lighter, you do have more of that instant gratification. So it's going to, you're going to want to use it to get long-term gain. But if you don't want to mess with something too light and you want something a little bit stronger, Shawnee Darden's retinol reform, Yes, my, I couldn't decide what color green I wanted on my nails, so I just decided to make this one different. Not my best nail moment, but Shawnee Darden's Retinol Reform is a nice one as well. You can get this one at Sephora, and it's been around for years. It's an encapsulated retinol. Moving on to moisturizers, I'm going to first talk about two moisturizers with a purpose, followed by moisturizers that are meant to just moisturize. Moisturizers with a purpose are things that are targeting a problem or things helping you in your routine to simplify your routine, like Dr. Idris's Active Seal. This is a vitamin C moisturizer in one. Again, same formula, different name. <laughs> it is a a vitamin C moisturizer with tetraxyl desyl ascorbate as well as peptides and ceramides in it as well as always glycerin based it is a gel moisturizer for all skin types so the goal of this is to help even out your skin tone while delivering hydration but if you are somebody who is super dry in a dry climate you might need to supplement with a basic rich hydrating moisturizer it's important to incorporate vitamin C every day. Vitamin C is one of the most well-known antioxidants. The reason I like it in the moisturizer is that you can double up with a serum with other antioxidants so you can really get the biggest bang for your buck. Then you have, oops, Eucerin's Q10 Anti-Wrinkle Cream. This is a coenzyme Q10, which is also an antioxidant. In it, you have vitamin E, beta carotene as well. And it is a nice moisturizer. It is a thicker moisturizer 
and as you, it's like it's like very very bouncy as well so this is much thicker and it is an antioxidant moisturizer as well those are moisturizers with purpose and when i'm talking about basic ones i'm talking about things that just deliver hydration to help calm your skin this is a terrible packaging because you cannot read it, but it's Purito Oat Intense Cream. It's 71% oat, so if you have irritated skin, this is a nice one. It's kind of like a better version of the Avino Calm and Restore. Skin Suticle Stripid Lipid, Triple Lipid has no hyaluronic acid. It is really great for dry skin. Issue with this is it has essential oils if you are somebody who is sensitive, but it is ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids in one. Dr. Sam Bunting. I love this packaging. I love the chunkiness of the pump. Has a flawless moisturizer, which is a gel cream that absorbs relatively quickly with 5% niacinamide shea butter, but it does have hyaluronic acid. So if you have hyaluronic acid in your routine, try not to triple up on it. You don't need more. More is not more with HA. Let this be the only product with the HA in your sequence or your lineup. And then we have ways to infuse moisturizers with extra hydration for the extra dry in the extra dry climates you can either buy pure based glycerin which i know was on my desk and i no longer know where it is from any sort of duane reed or cvs i literally just had it this is weird it walked away or you can buy this one by experiment which is a little bit gen z and tacky but this is their 30 percent glycerin serum so you could put a drop of this right let's say literally a drop of this it's just very tacky into your favorite moisturizer which is mine dr idris right if you feel like you need to get extra moisture you can mix it in to really allow your moisturizers to infuse more hydration for your skin glycerin at 100 percent is not great for your skin so you really do want to make sure that the upper limit does not go above like 30 40 percent at most okay so that is the glycerin and then we have and i don't have this here but i'll put a picture up here of triple paste triple paste is a diaper cream that i love especially in the winter to help calm your skin barrier and to restore moisture it is a diaper rash cream but i do put it on my face especially when my skin barrier is broken in the winter to really help restore it and zinc which has great anti-inflammatory properties zinc oxide is not the same as zinc pca that's a story for another day so then we have our sun screens now sunscreens are a thing not of the past because the damage is done but it doesn't mean you can't start if you have not gotten used to using a sunscreen there is no point in investing all this time effort energy money and emotion in your skincare or in in office procedures with me if you're not doing the work every day to protect yourself and i say this with love and i'm not saying this because i have any gain in any sort of pharmaceutical company that makes a sunscreen okay but starting with nice ones that you can double up on laura mercier this is an SPF 30. I use it in the winter time as a makeup because I don't have time to apply makeup and I go ploop, ploop, two fingers, ready to go out the house. SPF 30, it's enough. But if I'm at the beach, am I going to use that? No. Isden has an SPF 50 plus, which is really, really nice. It's slightly more on the oilier side, but it dries relatively quickly, I would say. So if you're somebody who is on the drier side, this is great for a mineral sunscreen. If you are somebody who's on the oilier side, Lightsaver has a mineral sunscreen as well this is made by my colleague dr kim i have no financial gain in his company whatsoever i just have an emotional gain in him winning and then last we have beauty of joshan which has been a staple and a favorite of mine this is probably the only one that i love of their product line relief sun rice and probiotic spf 50. it's an international sunscreen obviously i like them more myself because i have very sensitive eyes and i'm trying to find the perfect u.s sunscreen for people with sensitive eyes but that has been a hard quest to do so that is skincare in your 40s i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys really um embrace the aging process because it's not about anti-aging it's about aging youthfully not just physically but also mentally i hope you have a beautiful saturday and i will catch you guys next week when i'll be 40 and one week you guys are going to get so sick of hearing me say i'm a 40 year old dermatologist but just get ready